ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு என்பிடிஎல் என்ஓசி அண்ட் இன்ட்ரோடக்டரி கோர்ஸ் ஆன் பாயிண்ட் செட் டெக்னாலஜி பார்ட் டூ ஸோ வி பிகின் வித் எ நியூ சாப்டர் மெட்ரைசேஷன் த ப்ராப்ளம் ஆஃப் வென் அண்ட் ஆர்பிட்ரி டெக்னாலஜி கம்ஸ் ஃபார் அ மெட்ரிக் இட்ஸ் ப்ராப்ளி நோன் ஆஸ் மெட்ரைசேஷன் தியரம் Apart from the theoretical importance of this question, its solution play a solution, you may say, there are many solutions, play a very important role in our understanding of topological spaces in general. In this chapter, we shall focus on two such solutions. One is Eurydon's metrization, other one is Nagata's Mirnov metrization. the same kind of result was proved separately by nagata as well as merno so here in the nagata smirno metrization para compactness enters into picture namely with its property of admitting sigma locally finite refinements for every open cover okay so we are going to present the proof due to nagata for smirnov's proof you can see uh, in the book of willard for example so let us make a formal definition take a topological space then it is called metrizable topological space if there exists a metric on the underlying set x with the family of all open balls forming a base for tau in other words some open sub h is open if and only for each point inside you you have an open ball corresponding to the metric contained inside the open set u or oh, contained inside given set u then only you will get uh, u as a open set that is the topology induced by the metric if that coincides with tau we will say tau is metrizable the difference between a metric space and a metrizable space is that on a metric space a metric has been chosen whereas on a metrizable space only the topology is chosen and it is possible to choose a metric which gives this particular topology in fact there may be several topo- several metrics which give the same topology but we will be interested only in study of the the topology there starting with the topological space we naturally ask a question when it is metrizable any answer to this should be purely in terms of the topological properties It turns out that there are number of very useful answers to this question rather than some useful characterizations i mean which may be useless characterization often characterizations can be merely tautologies okay that is why if this happens then i am sure kind of theorems are more valuable than if and only if theorems the if and only if part may be as difficult as finding the uh, original uh, condi- you know uh, satisfying the original condition it is not always the case the several characterizations always help you to find peop- find uh, things also in a easy way so that is not a global uh, remark anyway so we shall study only two such results here one is eurydon's metrization and the other one is nagata's mirnov as i have told you earlier so today in module 26 let us concentrate on eurydon's metrization theorem to begin with we have this theorem about products which will be used in the proof of this theorem eurydon's metrization what is it take a countable family of metrizable spaces this countable family is important huh? finite is included of course then 
the product is metrizable with the product topology here okay whenever you take take the product the first thing you do is to take product topology okay so how do we do that to begin with you can choose any metric on xn that is one which gives you the corresponding tau n whatever topology but then i would like to choose it carefully by choosing it to be bounded by some number that you have that you know how to do that namely if d is a metric you can define capital d as minimum of distance xy or r for every xy where r is any fixed number in particular for d and i will do the same thing with taking r equal to 1 by n square okay maybe 1 by n will also do something some control for each n you know as the control should be becoming stronger and stronger that's all i need here okay so you can take 2 power n also for example 1 divided 2 power n also all right now once you have chosen that now for each x n and y n x and y inside product space x n and y n are now sequences you can think of that one okay we define delta of x y so this is going to be a metric on the product by just taking the sum of d n x n y n so when i take this sum you should know that this is convergent otherwise this won't make sense as an element of r and that is precisely the role of this choosing these these matrix the nth matrix dn is bounded by 1 by n square so each element here dn will be less than or equal to 1 by n square therefore the sum total less than or equal to sum total 1 by n square which is convergent okay so therefore this is this uh, as a real number it makes sense no problem moreover i want to claim that this delta is going to be a metric now okay so first of all suppose dxy is zero that means you look at this summation this summation is sum of all non negative numbers right so if the total is zero each of them must be zero dn of x and y n is zero dn are matrix therefore x n equal to y n for every n which means x and y are the same elements of course if you look at this one if you interchange x and y n this value doesn't change because dn is symmetric therefore delta xy is same thing as delta of yx the triangle inequality is also valid because each xn yn zn distance between dn xn yn plus dn xn yn zn is less than to dn xn zn okay so you can take the sum that will give you delta xy plus delta yz is less than it delta xz is less than equal to delta xy plus delta yz so that is also easily verified okay so what remains is why this metric gives you the topology that we have already chosen namely product topology giving a metric is no is not at all difficult there are so many metrics you know you can just take a discrete metric also and so on so now the topology should be the same that is the other thing okay one thing is sure such things we have verified if uh, this family is finite then we know that sum of the matrix is a metric okay so that is the way we have become bold enough here to do this one and our boldness pays here okay so let epsilon positive be any then x belong to product of x and be any point first choose a k such that summation 1 by n square after you know n after k bigger than k this is less than epsilon by 2 so this is the remainder term after n uh, after uh, k terms here okay that should be less than epsilon by 2 so i can choose given epsilon can choose k because summation n square is convergent so now choose r positive such that 
this 1 by n square carrying 1 to k the first k terms okay, that sum into r is less than epsilon by 2. So, this may be too large multiply by r such that it becomes less than epsilon by 2 r has be torn on such. Okay. So, first k terms are conduct uh, controlled by this r the remaining terms are already uh, you know controlled here because we have chosen k in that way. So, that is the whole idea. Now, consider b n set of all y n belonging to x n such that distance between x n and y n is less than r by corresponding n square. So, this is an open ball inside x n centered around x n little x n. Okay. Now, take u to be product of inside product x n or y inside in the product space such that y n is inside b n only for 1 less than u to n less than u to k. The rest of the n's there is no condition. So, that is a basic open subset see why each b n is an open subset in x n. So, this will be a basic open subset in the product topology, because conditions are only finitely many here the rest of them y could be anything right y n could be anything. So, take u to be such an f after choosing b n like this take u to be this one clearly it follows that x is inside that one because the first x 1 x 2 x n are inside corresponding b n s b, b 1 b 2 b n the rest of them there is no condition. So, x must be inside u that is no clear that is clear and u is open also clear. Okay. Also, if y is inside u what happens the first n terms y n and x x n is less than less than r by n square right. So, for first n to n k equal to 1 to k each of term is correspondingly 1 by 1 square 1 by 2 square and so 1 by they will be all 1 by n square I have taken, but r is common r times that one. So, r is common it is summation 1 to k 1 by n square right. The rest of them because k is bigger 1 by n square itself is less than epsilon by 2 this is less than epsilon by 2. So, this whole thing is less. Okay, r by n square has been chosen for that reason. That means, what distance between any point y and x is less than epsilon means the open ball of radius u is contained inside b epsilon of x for every x it happens right. For every y x is inside u then for every y this happens. So, u is contained inside b epsilon of x. This means, every open ball in the metric topology is open in the product topology. Okay. So, therefore, the metric topology is finer than the product topology. So, all these so all the open balls here are uh, contained inside that one. So, for each point. So, these are open subsets of in, uh, open subsets in the uh, product topology. Okay. Now, to show that an open set in the product topology is open in the metric topology, we shall show that this curly m is the, the metric topology, this is the product topology. Okay. Suppose, I show this is continuous, what does that mean? Take any open set in the product topology, this is identity map, okay. so it is open here. Okay, just now we have shown metric topology everything metric is open here. So, I have to show that this is ident this identity map is continuous this way this way we have already shown that would mean that identity map is a homeomorphism which is same thing as m is equal to tau. Okay. So, how to show this is continuous any map into the product space is continuous if and only if all the coordinate projections of that map are continuous. So, take projection map pi n from x n to x n product of x n to x n 
compose it with the identity it's just again product only what you get is i have to show that product xn with metric topology to xn with the usual topology whatever topology it comes this is continuous okay so that's what i have to show then this identity map will be continuous since both are metric spaces now xn i have chosen a metric right such that its topology is given by the metric here i have given already a metric and i am looking at the metric topology so both are metric spaces this can be easily checked by sequential continuity suppose is x x upper m is a sequence in the product space which converges to x upper 0 that is also an element in the product space what does that mean we must show that every projection map okay x m k or x m n you can put x m k to x 0 k they are you know convergent x m k is convergent to x 0 k that's what i would show sequential uh, continuity is enough okay but what is the meaning of this one in the product suppose this this sequence converges to this one what is the meaning of this delta xm x upper m to x0 not can be made less than some epsilon given epsilon right the delta is here so where i have defined this this function okay once that is the case this is sum of positive term non negative terms each term will be less than epsilon right so fix one k here that will be like this whole sum is less than epsilon something each term will be less than corresponding term will be less than epsilon. therefore sequence converges to a point in the product here implies each coordinate converges there so that is because of our choice of the uh, product uh, metric here so what we have proved here is that countable product of metric spaces is metrizable countable product of metrizable spaces metrizable okay now every subspace of metric space is metrizable there is no problem right uh, you have seen this one in the uh, in uh, uh, first part itself okay you can take the restricted metric that will give you restricted topology that's all from the above theorem it follows that if you take 0 1 raised to a countable product 0 1 raised to this natural number a countable product of copies of the closed interval 0 1 that is metrizable okay in general i can call it hilbert cube when i am talking about as a topological space there is no problem as a metric space you will have to see what metric you give right here i am taking only product topology it can be made given the metric quite often people call it hilbert cube only after choosing a metric so that is uh, that is why i have said this is metrizable thus we would like to embed a given metric space in a hilbert cube then it will follow that that metric space is also that is uh, topological space is also metrizable okay thus it remains to find out which are the spaces that can be embedded in a hilbert cube okay a topological space is embeddable in a hilbert cube if and only if it is a second countable t3 space in particular a second countable t3 space is metrizable so this is the final theorem of eurizon's metrization so what we are going to do we take hilbert uh, we take second countable t3 space regular and t1 okay we will show that it can be embedded in the 
Hilbert cube. In fact, what it says is, if you have a subspace of Hilbert cube, it has to be second count every three space, if and only, there is no other choice. So, Urion's metrization theorem is only if part, in the sense that there may be many other metric spaces which are not necessarily second countable, right? It does not answer those things, right? So, it is only a partial answer, but it is a very useful theorem. Okay, proof is very easy now. See, i power n is compact and every subspace, you know, of a compact metric space is second countable. Therefore, the necessary condition, necessity of the condition in the statement uh, theorem follows. Okay. So, subspace, compact metric space is T4 also, T, uh, T, T, in fact, T5 also. So, it will be automatic, subspace will be T3. And so, T3 has to be uh, there also. Now, conversely, let X be a second countable T3 space. We have proved earlier that a regular Lindelof space is normal. Okay. Second countable implies Lindelof. T3 includes regularity. Therefore, our space is automatically normal. To show that it is embeddable in I power n, we will use Tikhonov's embedding theorem. Okay. So, 5.19. It is sufficient to find a countable family of continuous functions from x to 0, 1, which separates points and closed sets. If it separates points, the corresponding embedding will be corresponding function that we are showing, it will be injective. If it separates closed sets and points, it will be open mapping or a closed mapping. That is why it is it is embedded. That is how we have proved it. So, we will only prove this part now that there is a countable family of continuous functions which separates points as well as closed sets. Automatically separate points because points are closed in our x because x is also a Hausdorff space also, T1 space also. So, begin with a countable base B for x. This countable family is now coming because of the second countability of x. So, start with a countable base for the topology of x. Okay, put f equal to curly f equal to ordered these pairs u comma v inside b cross b such that u bar is contained inside b. Okay, so this kind of things will make sense because of regularity. Otherwise, such things may be empty. So that should not happen. Then this is there are plenty of this capital curly f. There are plenty of them. Nevertheless, it is a countable sub family because B cross B is countable, so it is a sub, sub, sub family, so it is countable family. Now, for each member u comma v of f, let f u comma v from x to 0 1 be such that this f u v is a suffix here, operating upon u bar is singleton 0, operating upon x minus v is singleton 1. So, this is where we have used normality. You see u bar is closed, x minus v is closed, they are disjoint because u bar is contained inside v. Okay. For each pair u v, you have an f u v which takes u bar to 0 and x minus v to 1. This family f u v as u v varies over f is required family that we have to show that it separates points and closed subsets. Given a closed set f and a point outside it, we can first find a v belonging to b in the base, right? such that x is inside v contained inside x minus f. x belongs to x minus f and x minus f is open. Okay f is closed. Therefore, you can find a basic element v, x belongs to v contained in x minus f. Okay. Then, we can find u again inside b such that 
axis inside u contained inside u bar contained inside v because regularity of x now what we have got is this u comma v is a member of here it follows that the corresponding f u v separates x from f or right because the whole of u bar goes to 0 or x goes to 0 and the complement x minus v goes to 1 and x minus v contains f ok so so our theorem Euridon's metrization theorem is over ok basically because we have already done Tikhonov's theorem and then we just finish the product uh, theorem product of uh, metrizable spaces is mm -hmm. countable product of metrizable spaces metrizable so this is the way to remember okay tikhonov immunity theorem and this product uh, metric for countable product metric you see it is theorem so let us do next time uh, nagata smirnov thank you